Hi, my name's Andy Sykes. I'm an illustrator and animator, and I teach animation at universities here in the UK. Why not check out my website, hexjibber.com, where you can find animation and illustration by me, as well as more lessons in Flash and After Effects. Cheers. Hi, and welcome to another one of my tutorials on how to create elemental animation. This time, we're mainly gonna be using Flash. We're gonna start off in Flash, and then maybe do a little bit of a tweak in After Effects by adding some motion blur. So we're going to look at how to make explosions this time. I'm not claiming to be any kind of expert on creating explosions. They're difficult to animate and really you've just got to develop your own technique on how to do them. But I'm going to show you how I developed this one. Let's take a look at the example. Here we go. You can see what I've got is a really nice simple explosion with a little bit of wiggle on it, which I added in After Effects with a little bit of motion blur. So let's take a look at how I constructed that in Flash. You can see, here we are. This is my explosion. But I developed it very slowly. So it started off like this. Just drew a shape that was very simple. This kind of cloud's not very realistic. If you check out Joseph Gillen's books, Elemental Magic 1 and 2, he tells you how to draw more realistic looking smoke clouds and explosions. But I wanted to make a nice kind of simple cartoony one in this example. So I started off with this shape, which I drew with my Wacom tablet. And on twos, so that's a new keyframe every two frames, I essentially just scaled it up from this original one here. And I added a couple of little kind of lobby bits around the edges just to show that it was expanding. And again, I copied it and sized it up a little bit more and made the blobby bits bigger and added a couple of little ones in the center. And I did the same here. You can see the expansion rate towards the end of the animation is a lot slower. So it starts off very quick, and then it kind of slows down, like a dust cloud would. There we go. And next up, I added a little bit more to it. So I started off with just a black screen, and then I had a kind of spark. If you're thinking about explosions, you tend to get this kind of spark at the beginning, uh, which is showing the actual kind of explosion. So that's on twos, and then I added the first frame of my explosion there. You see I've coloured it in with kind of explosion-y sorts of colours. One of the mistakes perhaps I've made with this cloud is the highlights around the edge are the same width all the way through. Really, if you're wanting realistic clouds, or clouds that look convincing in a cartoony way, it's best not to have kind of parallel lines like this. You want to taper the highlights as much as possible and not have them the same thickness all the way through. And you see it's getting bigger. I think I added a couple more frames towards the end. I brought back in this spark. So you've got the sense of the explosion happening and then kind of gaining more energy and exploding again. And then these last two at the end, they're new frames, which look more plumy, like have, they have kind of more, more of a sort of star shape, more of a triangular edge where they're gaining mass and expanding. So there we go. You might be wondering why I've done these sparky bits in blue. That's just to kind of separate them from the rest. They don't end up being blue in the final thing. So let's take a look at what I did next. What I've done is I've made these blue bits into a kind of yellowy colour and I've made them into a movie clip and added this kind of glow effect. So let's just check that out. Here we go in my properties you can see it's a movie clip and I've got my filters down here. I've got this glow with a blur of 25, a strength of 133 and a quality of high and I've used this yellowy colour here. It's not a knockout and it doesn't have an inner glow. If I turn it off, you can see we've just got this sort of matte shape. 
So what the glow does is it gives it that kind of more fiery, explodey feel. And you can see that I've embedded these extra bits here underneath some of the plumy parts of my image to make them feel like they go together. And I've tapered these inside plumes so that they're not the same width all the way along. It just makes them look a bit more smoky and a bit more natural. And there we go. I've made this one into a movie clip as well. I haven't made the cloud into a movie clip because I don't want the cloud to be glowing. I just want these spiky bits to glow. And there we go. And here we go. This is just another version of it. I've added this extra frame at the end, which is half transparent. What I've done is I've given it a black tint and I've just pulled that black down very slightly. So it's at 30%. And now I've got this. This is the final version. So you can see that's my process, that's how I developed things. If I wanted to be even fancier, I could add a whiteout frame at the beginning so that it looks like the camera's been so overwhelmed by this explosion that it's whited out the camera and overexposed the film. So I'm going to move the animation a couple of frames forward and I'm going to create a new keyframe. I'm going to draw a rectangle and make it the size of the stage, which in this case is 1280 by 720. And I'm going to use my align to stick it in the center, like so. So it starts off black, goes to white, and then my animation begins. So it looks like this. You could place a whiteout frame anywhere you liked. It's generally best near the beginning, but you could place it after this frame perhaps and the whiteout before we see the next one. But in my original example, I didn't bother with any whiteout frames. What I did is I exported this as PNG sequence and took it into After Effects. You don't have to use a PNG sequence. You can, in fact, import SWFs into After Effects, which is really, really cool. And in this example here, what I've done is I've got this PNG sequence and I've put some wiggle on it. If you don't know how to do wiggle in After Effects, make sure you check out my After Effects tutorial on basic expressions. I've got my position parameter. I've put a wiggle on it and I've attached it to a slider. So what I've done is I've said this wiggle should wiggle five times a second and it should take the value of how many pixels it's wiggling in from this slider. So it goes from wiggling at a value of 50 at the beginning. And then at the end, it goes from 50. You can see my slider's value of 50 goes down to 10 and then down to zero. You can see that it's wiggling, 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 and then it stops. And I've also stuck some motion blur on this layer. I've enabled it on the layer there and here at the top. If you don't know how to use motion blur, check out my motion blur tutorial in my After Effects lessons. So there we go, that's how I got this final explosion with a bit of motion blur and a bit of camera shake on it. Have a go yourself and I'll see you in the next lesson. Hey, thanks for checking out this tutorial. Next up, why not take a look at my website, hexjibber.com where you can find out more about my self-published books, the Hextuber Colouring and Activity book, and the Hextuber Anti-Revision book. They're both suitable for kids and adults alike, and are well worth checking out.